Once, there was the elephant, the origin of all dreams and fantasies. Massacred for its ivory, or worshipped as a god. The source of ancient legends, a divine and royal mount, a loyal companion. but also a mountain of meat, a rite of passage into manhood. This ivory tusk giant haunts our imagination. For centuries, man and elephant have forged a unique bond steeped in fascination and mystery. In Asia, the elephant is considered the mount of the gods, a living image of stability and constancy. In Cambodia, the Rimkur Shadow Theater recounts its legendary story. The elephant's divine power brings peace and prosperity. Invoking the power of the elephant grants every wish. The elephant contributed much to the extensive Khmer Empire. A royal mount and comrade in arms, it also participated in everyday life. With the elephant's help, the sacred temples of Angkor were built in record time. Angkor, the former capital of the empire, founded in the 9th century, was the jewel of southern Asia for many long years. Six centuries later, it was devastated by the Thai and abandoned. A 19th century Khmer king discovered the ruins one day as he was hunting on elephant back as if the animal had guided him to the forgotten city. Today, these elephants carry tourists, but their ancestors still haunt the ruins of the city. The elephant terrace is named for them. The king and his entourage watch the festivities from here. The many relief sculptures and friezes illustrate the artistic and spiritual influence of their special companions. For Sri Lankans, the elephant is an auspicious and sacred animal. Here, men and elephants have traveled the same road for more than 2,000 years. Ejai is a young Kornak. Today, he is taking his elephant in Diraja, 30 kilometers away, to the temple of Kandi, one of the country's major religious cities. It's a difficult trip on a busy road built by other elephants more than a century ago. The elephant enjoys a special status in Sri Lanka. It has always played a role in many Buddhist rituals. Indiraja is a phenomenally powerful male elephant. Under the control of his cornac, he is obedient and his behavior remains predictable. These traits qualify him for a specific duty and to participate in one of the most important religious ceremonies in the country. According to legend, Queen Maya conceived the Buddha with an elephant calf. Through its purity and otherworldliness, the animal symbolizes a pillar of faith. 
the Kandi temple has a precious relic, the tooth of the Buddha taken from his ashes more than 2,000 years ago. Every year for 11 days, Sri Lankans worship the tooth according to a tradition that is 17 centuries old. The most handsome elephants are selected to parade before two million worshippers to honor the living Buddha. But only one has the privilege of carrying the Buddha's tooth. This year, Indiraja is the chosen one. He leads the procession, which will last nearly four hours, under the watchful eye of his young Kornak. For Buddhists, coming to Kandi to worship the sacred tooth represents the pilgrimage of a lifetime. In earlier days, only kings had the right and duty to protect this relic. Today, some people claim that the true relic never leaves its secret hiding place and that worshippers only see a copy. But it doesn't matter. The aura of the Buddha is still here and the elephants, the pride of the country, participate fully in the splendid ceremony. Some of these elephants come from the market at Sonepur, where the Ganges and Gandak rivers meet. India's largest animal fair is held here every year from October to November. There are all kinds of animals. But everyone waits for the elephants. They come from everywhere. More than 300 stand in the huge meadow set aside for them. Nearly every elephant passes through the Sonapur fair. All royal courts, circuses, and forestry sites have an elephant that was purchased here. The Kornaks outdo one another in their efforts to show off their animals. <laughs> I think I can sell Mati for a very good price. And then I want to buy a younger elephant. A new elephant is like a new friend. You do different things together. His name is Salah. He's 32. I want to sell him for $12,000. Potential buyers inspect the animals thoroughly. Later, they may close the deal with the seller in private, inside a tent. The price I'll pay depends on the age of the elephant. If it's a baby, I pay about $10,000 for it. If it's an adult male, however, like this one, it will cost me $17,000 to This animal heads off with his new owner. He doesn't know what work he'll do. He may carry wood or perhaps people. But his fate will not be a tragic one, as opposed to that of his distant ancestors, which were used as war machines. In Rimini, Italy, the Renaissance masterpiece of the Tempio Malatestiano illustrates this influence. These 15th century sculptures demonstrate that the strength and innocence of the elephant made it a pillar of faith. It supports the church, represented by a tower. In Europe, it was viewed as a symbol of chastity, and an avenger of adultery. 
In antiquity, Aristotle claimed that during the two years a female carried her calf, the male never went near another female. Viewed as a wise and dignified creature, the elephant hated the dragon, the incarnation of evil. Along with Adam and the animals of creation, it held a proud position in the Garden of Eden. Because of its virtues, it was often compared to the Virgin Mary. In the litanies of the Virgin, Mary herself is often described as an ivory tower. Ivory, a pure and noble material produced by the elephant. In Rome, the obelisk of the Piazza Santa Maria evokes the words of the English naturalist Edward Topsell. No other creature offers such a grandiose demonstration of the omnipotence of God the Almighty than the elephant. The mammoth, the ancestor of the elephant, master of all that lives on earth. It is as famous as it is mysterious. Hunted for its meat, it was part of the everyday world of prehistoric man. But they may have attributed to it a specific power or divine role. Perhaps with these extraordinary paintings, they wanted to transmit their fascination for the mammoths. The Dolgan people have always maintained a link with the mammoths. They live on the Taimir Peninsula in the far northern reaches of Siberia in a harsh environment. In the distant past, they hunted mammoths for food. To survive today, they travel over the immense territory of the tundra hunting wild reindeer. These nomads often discover the bones and tusks of the most famous of prehistoric animals, which disappeared in Europe during the Ice Age. The Dolgans use ivory for their tools, harnesses, and handmade objects. Their resources are limited, but they have learned to use them well. One day during a hunt, a family made a strange discovery they found a gigantic pair of ivory tusks protruding from the ground. <laughs> Under their feet in the frozen earth was a mammoth in perfect condition that had died 20,000 years earlier. <laughs> This discovery marked the start of a tremendous adventure in which these men became accidental heroes. The family then informed the scientists so that they could extract the mammoth without offending it. When you take the mammoth out, you have to give something back to the earth. You have to sacrifice a white reindeer or two dogs. You have to throw money, small coins into the hole, and cover it with some sand. If you don't do this, the underground spirit of Rahili may get angry, and one of you could die. <laughs> <laughs> Named Jarkov after the Dolgan man who discovered it, the mammoth mobilized all the attention and energy of the most famous researchers. They decided unanimously to keep the mammoth in the block of permafrost so that it would remain frozen. After two years of hard work under extreme conditions, Jarkov was finally disengaged 
from its tomb. In addition to the scientific interest of these images, they can be compared to prehistoric cave paintings, as if bringing them to life. Now, thanks to Jarkov, people dream of reviving the master of all that lives on Earth. In Africa, the elephant is above all a mountain of meat. The Mandari in Sudan are shepherds and great hunters. Before hunting the elephant, they sing to spur each other on. So sweet to our ears is the cry of the hunter pursuing the elephant. So sweet to our ears the snap of the tree broken by the elephant. So sweet to our ears the cry of the old male wounded by our spears. So sweet to our ears the sound of our weapons piercing its flanks. Alone is the male in the heat of the battle. With pride, I fight a hard struggle. Your solitary call, old male, did not discourage our arms. Our wrists grasp our spears tightly. Our feet are raw from following you. Now we are ready to leap. Take care, as your ivory will adorn our arms before the rainy season comes. This hunt is also an initiation rite. Killing an elephant, daring to get close enough to throw a spear at its flank, means becoming a man, a hero. In the village, the women await the return of the hunters. Soon, they will cut the meat into strips, then dry it in storehouses. It's time to share the joy of the hunt with the family. The green labyrinth of the Central African equatorial forest. The elephants live in the forest at Zangabai, on the border. The animals themselves have created an immense clearing in the heart of the jungle to frolic in the muddy salt marsh. These forest elephants are a complete mystery. No one except for perhaps the Baca pygmies knows anything about their migrations or their diet. The Baca are hunters and gatherers and live in the Dzangasanga reserve. Mikama, the old chief hunter, is initiating two young Baca into the secrets of this place. We believe important men can be reincarnated as elephants, leaders of their herd. This is why we must respect and honor them. In the past, we beseeched the spirits of the forests and sang to the invincible mountain of meat that we ended up killing and eating. The salt marsh is our territory. This is where we come to hunt. Before, to become a man, a baka had to spear the flank of an elephant. It was difficult and very dangerous. 
But times have changed. After helping the white man hunt this animal, now we have to protect it. The salt marsh has become a reserve, and we can no longer hunt here. In the 19th century, explorers started to massacre African elephants by the thousands. Hunting reserves were created so that the white man could collect his ill-gotten trophies. From that time on, local populations could no longer kill elephants. In the face of this brutal and incomprehensible ban, they turned to poaching. Hunted down by some and poached by others, the elephant entered one of its darkest hours. Like other Africans, the Mandari do not accept the fact that they can no longer hunt their finest source of food, the elephant. Soldiers escort Mandari hunters from several different camps, all suspected of having killed several elephants. Under the tree where justice is rendered and where their spears have been placed, the men will be judged for a crime that they don't understand. And then we shall make some findings from, the, from those involved to tell us who among the Mundaris were also involved, so that the, the, the Mundaris to uh, uncover this for us. You know that hunting is forbidden. You know the elephants belong to the government. Bring a lot of foreign exchange, which these uh, Holland people want, instead of uh, Sudan currencies. See? Tell them. The soldiers want you to give them the ivory. Foreigners pay a lot of money for it. Tell them where it's hidden. But the ivory is ours. We won't say anything without the advice of our chief. I'm the chief here. But the Mandari acknowledge only the old, blind Akuang as chief. He no longer sees with his eyes, but with his heart, and can see into the heart of others. The commander wants Akuang to hand over the hunters and reveal where the ivory is hidden, otherwise the village will suffer serious reprisals. You ask that of me, who can already see the land where the old elephants die? Of me, who led the hunt and shed the blood of the animals that unite us? You ask me to persuade my people to give themselves up to you, who treat as criminals the men who are heroes among us? A long time ago, a star-studded night took over my eyes. Today, this night has overcome my people. A worthy man does not respond to the threat of rifles, and we shall remain silent. Forbidden from hunting, the Mandari will have to leave their land, and white men will take their place. Their culture will die out because of a curse, the curse of ivory. The Mnong people in Asia possess the last surviving link with the elephant. These proud and free men live on the high plateaus in southern Vietnam. For them, elephants are part of their families. They have souls and are sacred. The Nang devote their lives to capturing and training them so they can travel through the thick equatorial forest.
They are called the Ivory Knights. According to the legend, elephants were once men. One day, a woman gave a fish to her child, who turned into an elephant. She gave the rest to the fishermen, who were also transformed. They all returned to the village for some time. Then the elephants went back into the forest after telling the men they could depend on their help. But they had to make a great offering and fashion a lasso made of buffalo hide to catch them. Makun is the last ivory knight. His three sons dream of matching his record. He alone has captured 300 elephants. Makun advises them and checks the lasso. Made of buffalo hide, it symbolizes the bond that links the Nang to their ancestors, the elephant. Oh, elephant, here is rice for you. Call the other elephants of the herd so that we can capture one, the most enormous elephant around. May the blood of this pig mixed with this alcohol protect you, give you good feet, and place you on the path of a wild elephant. Oh, elephants, remember the rice we gave you in the past. Before leaving their village, the men have purified themselves of any misdeeds committed in previous hunts. The Mnong have been gone several weeks. They have not yet captured a wild elephant. Not a single person lives on the other side of the river. It's elephant territory. They return every year during the dry season, as food is abundant. Makun's sons are happy to return to the freedom of their nomadic life. In the past, the Mnong sold these animals in Cambodia, Burma, and Thailand. The Mnong were so famous that the king of Thailand brought them to his country to train a white elephant. Even if Makun's sons do manage to capture an elephant, it could very well be one of the last. Their father will always be the last remaining ivory knight, an esteemed symbol of a past when elephants and men were one and the same people.
The elephant goes back to the earliest origins of the world. It nourishes our spirits and is the inspiration for our greatest stories. Like this Indian hymn celebrating the elephant god Ganesh. Greetings to you, supreme being, who like a bottle of treasures holds every success. You whose belly is well-rounded. The gods, the demons, the greatest wise men cannot succeed without your consent. <laughs> 